Shall we move on then, Bruce? Thank you very much, Chair. So there's three parts to this paper. First is an update, or they're all an update, but the first is about um, Workstream 2, which is um, NHS uh, improvements element of the overall um, uh, national programme for maternity, which is chaired by Sarah Jane Marsh, and the senior responsible officer for the whole of the maternity programme is Professor Jane Cummins, the chief nursing officer. So we, in NHS Improvement, are part of delivering one of those nine work streams. Um, you'll see in the paper on page 42, um, the work, on page 41 rather, the, pa the work that uh, we are, um, are undertaking. The main part of that, I think, is the Maternal and Neonatal Health Safety Collaborative Programme where we've had a total of 87 uh, trusts are going through that at the moment. That's over two-thirds. By the end um, of the year, we would have had all of our 132 trusts with the maternity unit um, being able to go through that programme of uh, quality improvement for their own um, parts of their work. So I'm pleased particularly with Workstream 2 um, and in particular element of it, the collaborative, which is being led um, uh, with the patient safety team uh, jointly, so it's it's very much a cross directorate as well as a cross organisation. The second area to update the board is around the maternity safety support list. This is where the previous uh, Secretary of State commissioned in um, October last year how we would um, support at the time there was nine organisations that needed a particular urgent and support offer for their maternity units. They were the criteria was anyone that had um, uh, an inadequate for either safe or well led in their CQC mm -hmm. report, plus um, uh, another one as well for an, uh, an external investigation. You'll see from the list uh, at the back in one of the appendices that some have gone off that list now because they've improved. Um, we've had uh, we have had two new um, additions, North Devon and um, Kings Lynn. And I think we'll have, a, as a result of the meeting today that Cathy and I were at, we'll have another one that goes on that uh, list. Part of that is a real support hands-on offer with um, some senior midwifery leaders and um, an obstetrician out of Cathy's directorate, again, as a, an absolute support, working with them, working to support them um, and helping them move forward. It's very positive. There is a risk to this programme it's that it's funded to the end of March uh, next year. We'll do an evaluation in September and October and then we'll work out whether we it's val of value then to put through into the business um, process at the moment. Initial feedback is it's very, very welcome. And going to your point, David, we've already had one uh, trust have gone, actually I'd quite like a bit of this support because we recognise we've got some issues. So already the there is, that's the, that's the best part yeah. uh, for me is that people have recognised it. And then finally, part of this, pro this paper is about the midwifery leadership. Mm. Um, I'm delighted, just as we've been supporting um, aspirant <coughs> directors of nursing, aspirant deputy directors of nursing, and now we're supporting our current head of midwifery uh, leaders, but also aspirant head of midwifery leaders, and making sure that we've got the succession planning for what is one of the riskiest parts of any acute and community hospital around maternity. Um, services, so it's important that we grow and support our leaders. I'm very happy to answer questions, Chair. We wanted to give the board a, a six monthly update on what's happening in maternity services. Richard? I should say, I, I, like, I like this a lot. Um, and, I, and I just want to link it back to something um, that David said earlier on to Ian, actually, on his report about thinking about the 10 year vision and the five year plan. I sort of see that this sort of structure working really well here. So you've got a very clear vision about having mortality rates over yeah. a period. You've got some very clear clinical outcomes that you want at the end. And then you've got a very structured approach to thinking about what's the evidence-based mm -hmm. stuff we need mm -hmm. to do to deliver mm -hmm. that thing. And although when we get round to the sort of the vision and the plan, there'll be a lot of areas where you look at these in a sort of cross-cutting way, not just down yeah. particular yes. clinical stream. I just think looking at this sort of model, it's worth thinking about yeah, how this has developed and how we can feed that into some of the other areas we're looking at. Um, of course, in all of that, I'm assuming success 
on it, Ruth, but the sort of the way it looks, it looks a properly sort of structured approach to developing a plan based on a, a clear vision at the end of outcomes. It's very structured, it's very uh, well governed in that we all know who is responsible for what, by when, um, and it's got some in, uh, very inspirational leaders within it as well as then as it's clinically led and managerially supported. So um, I like the programme, but then I'm biased. It looks like it's a great example of us really as an improvement agency, um, providing support and challenge in an appropriate way. And working across ALBs, yes. so this is something that's working across by NHSE, uh, HE, ourselves and the Royal College of Midwives and others. Sarah Jane came to the NHS England board and took us through the overall. I have to say it's one of the best things that I think we've seen. Yeah. I thought the whole programme and the whole way it was done the leadership, the structure, the, the team that supported her as well, the extent of going right across the board for something there. Back to your point, it's one of the most, it's the highest volume and it's one of the most critical things. It's also one of the areas that ultimately, unfortunately, results in some of the biggest problems we have and therefore, you know, I think the whole programme to be commended and Ruth as well for her part of it. And Sarah, Jane and Jane yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments, sir? Uh, so two, two, or one comment, one question. The, the first was uh, I was very shocked by the, the statistic of how many vacant heads of maternity posts there are, and then encouraged over the page to read. You've got forty people. Have you got forty people signed up for September? Oh, yeah and more and to come. Have, and we could have outsold it, yeah. So I think that's a really important lesson because we know across the service there are management gaps we can't it's fill. It's true. And yet it turns out that when we offer support up front, we Absolutely. get knocked down in the rush. But the people mm. are there. This is exactly the point. <laughs> yes, that's lovely. Yes. That's lovely. My yeah. question was how, uh, I know that one of our hosted programmes here is the Health Safety Investigation Board and I know they have a massive job of work to do in terms of maternity. Um, and how that feeds into this programme. I couldn't quite spot the linkage. I think it's one for you, I think. Do you want me to um, say, so the, um, I, I think hosted is, is um, let's think of that as a tenuous hosting, yes. but, because they are supposed, they are independent in terms of how they do their investigations, but they were asked to um, take on an additional programme from the initial one, which was their, their regular one, which is up to 30 investigations a year. They were asked to uh, pr do investigations for um, you know any, any neonatal issues uh, up to, and do up to a thousand a year, huge. and um, we have been linking very closely with them recently. So they they are making progress with that. They have been getting people in, training them, and so on. And they have started in the south. They are starting one part of the country, uh, and they've kicked off quite a lot of those investigations. Now, in terms of how it links to this, the idea is as well that they will then train the people in the organisations share with them the learning uh, and that I think will build into making more robust the way that they uh, do things and learn and I think that will then loop back round to the way that the overall um, maternity learning will happen. I don't know if Ruth agrees with that. I still think it's early days mm. um, with this but it's important that we tie it back. It's one of the things as part of the work stream too it needs to happen. Mm. Um, Yes. We've, it's work in progress. You're going to get a lot of learning from a thousand investigations a year. That well, it definitely needs to. I, I, I think. <laughs> I, yeah. I think. It, I think. In all honesty, when you actually do talk, you know, I've obviously been through this, and I think that um, it will be some, it, if ever. They, to be honest, if they ever get to a thousand, but they, I think they're planning to do sort of three hundred odd next year, uh, still which is still a lot of learning. learning, and there will be almost a law of diminishing returns in terms of learning because you'll actually find that you're, you're finding some of the same things. Yes. We know that already actually. Um, yes. But it's, it's, some of it's about training people on the ground so yes. that they can do investigations in a more meaningful way yes. and, and share and support the, um, the reporting, you know, speaking up about things mm. and sharing with families in particular uh, how, in a good way. I mean, the one thing we always know about any investigations, whether it's maternity or mental health or whatever, it's always the case that those are lessons that we should have learned previously and the same yes. things come round and round again. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. In which case, um, there were, I should have said this earlier, apologies, there are um, three starred items. Is there anything people would like to unstar and comment on? Good.